episode six of Constellation is here, and we finally got to see what happened in the alternate reality where Paul survives the incident out on the ISS. And later in the video, I'm gonna share why I think this episode shows us a third yellow universe, which is different from the red and blue that we've seen up to this point. So let's break down this episode titled Paul is Dead and see what takeaways we've got as we move into the final two episodes of the show. And real quick, you can see here that 93% of you watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing. All right. Let's get to it. We open back where we started in episode one up on the ISS with Paul setting up the Cal device and Joe on a FaceTime call with Alice. We once again see the conversation happening in both English with Alice in a blue shirt and Swedish with Alice in a red and blue sweater. This time though, when things go haywire, we're shown one Joe seemingly watching another slam into a window and bloody up her face quite a bit. After the intro, we're shown what happened in the other reality where Paul survives and attempts to save Joe. And as he does, we see Irina's cosmonaut suit narrowly missing the space station and whizzing past the camera. Back on Earth, we see Magnus when he's given the news about Joe, sharing it with Alice, and then they travel to Kazakhstan where Alice asks, when you die in space, do you also die on Earth? And Magnus just tells her to get some sleep. Back on the ISS, it looks like Paul's searching for a missing Cal device and tells the other astronauts to pass along the news that he lost it, but they say they don't know what he's talking about. This proves that this Paul is from the other reality, the one that was performing the Cal experiment, and he swapped over to this one, much like the Joe from this reality passed over to the other. This also proves the Cal device was only existent in the other reality and not both. Back on the ground, Magnus finds Alice hiding in a cabinet, watching videos of other catastrophic events and attempts to make her come out, but she insists on staying and after kicking on the furniture a few times, she sees Joe approaching, mirroring what we saw back in an earlier episode, but from Joe's perspective. We cut back to Paul who's seeing and hearing things like Joe's voice from the other reality. This naturally freaks him out quite a bit and he asks ground control if he can just leave the body up there instead of bringing her back home. He then tells Joe to stop breathing just like Joe heard him say in her reality and when he grabs her hand to move her he sees a very alive Joe right in front of him. As he pushes her away and closes the door we see his hand through the glass just as Joe had seen it back in episode 2. Alice and Wendy are swinging together when Erica yells to Wendy, Daddy's coming home, and it just felt like she could have, I don't know, called Wendy inside to share the news instead of yelling it in front of Alice whose mom just died. Just saying. Next, Paul prepares to head home when he gets the same bolt system error that Joe got on her end. We once again see a shadowy figure approaching the flashing light back inside the station just before the spacecraft is released for flight. Paul looks out the window to see Joe back inside for a brief moment, but then she disappears and he heads back to Earth. Paul makes it home and kisses his wife and says, I love you so much, Frida. And she says, Erica is my name, which confirms my earlier theory that Paul's wife is Erica in this reality and not Frida. While it feels good to get a theory right, I'm actually pretty confused by this because this shows that there's kind of only one character that has a different name in these two different universes. We do have Bud and Henry, but I think Henry is his name in both realities. Bud is just a nickname. And then we have Irina and Valia, and I think Valia is also just a nickname. So it's confusing to me that only Frida and like Erica's very different from Frida uh, and the fact that she says Erica is my name. It's not like she says you call me Erica. So this one doesn't feel like a nickname and I'm confused as to why just the one character has a different name and there's not a bunch of different names. I suppose maybe as a viewer it would have gotten confusing to have all these characters with different names in both universes maybe. I don't know. I can't figure it out. Maybe you all have some ideas around this. Let me know down below. We then see Paul laying a flower at Joe's tree to pay his respects. As he kneels down, we can see him holding a piece of paper with the Edith Sodergren poem titled On Foot, I Had to Cross the Solar System, which is the poem Joe heard him reading in the other reality. As Paul stands up, he sees Joe looking back at him for a brief moment before disappearing. Later, Paul has a meal with the rest of his crew as well as Alice and Magnus. Alice asks why Joe was left up there, and as Paul's explaining what happened, Magnus storms out of the room with Alice. Paul then turns to see the other universe where a memorial area had been set up for him and not Joe. Joe. His crewmates ask if he's had his psyche valve, to which he says, I determine how I feel. Alice is then seen walking outside with her rabbit when she looks up at an empty window where Henry appears in the reflection waving back at her, which is the same Henry we saw back in episode three, who observed both versions of Alice through this very window. Alice steps inside and throws her rabbit down and begins stomping on it, proving this was in fact the other Alice we saw in an earlier episode. Wendy then comes in and asks Alice why she's doing that, to which Alice says the rabbit's for kids, and then rips one of the eyes out, sort of 
of symbolizing what happened to Joe up in space. Next, Paul's being asked by a panel about his account of what happened on the ISS when he begins talking about the Cal experiment, which nobody seems to understand. They show him recordings of what he was working on, which was definitely not the Cal, and Paul's told the Cal project was abandoned 12 years ago. The conversation changes to the decision on leaving Joe up there, which Frederick is pretty upset about because, as we know, in this universe, he and Joe were having an affair. Paul simply says he was ordered to leave her, appearing to not want to take responsibility for the choice that he made. Back at home, Alice is destroying gifts she and others had prepared for Joe's return from space, and she begins to hear Joe playing the piano in the alternate reality. But she's got quite a confused look on her face as she looks around because there's no piano in her home. Paul then watches a conspiracy video of the Apollo 18 mission where Bud could be heard saying that two men had died. After watching these videos, he meets with Michaela and asks where Henry, the man who built the Cal machine, is. Michaela says she assumes he's either drunk or dead in a ditch somewhere, and Paul storms out. Magnus and Alice have people over for Joe's wake, where Magnus finds Alice once again hiding in the cabinet. Alice says she doesn't understand why they would say goodbye while Joe is still up in space. Alice then reaches out to touch her beads, which reminds me of episode one when we can see Joe grabbing the beads up at the space station. So does that mean in one reality Joe took the beads with her, and in this one she didn't? It definitely feels like she cared more about her family in one reality, so maybe that's the one in which she took the beads with her, and in this one she left them? I'm not sure what the significance of these beads will be in the end, but they've been a fairly major focal point up to this point in the show, so I'm sure they'll mean something. If you have any theories on these beads, drop them down in the comments. When Paul arrives at the wake, he has a bit of a breakdown outside about leaving Joe up there and that maybe she's even still alive. Erica says they should just go home, but he heads inside anyway, where we see him taking the same red and yellow pills that we've seen all the other astronauts taking. And while it was hard to catch, I do actually see that his vitamins are labeled B, just like Joe's are, proving that he too was given the lithium after arriving back home. Paul tells Wendy to go check on Alice and the girls come back to the table where Wendy says, my dad thinks your mom may still be alive. And just then, both Paul and Alice look over to see the other Alice having entered the room and they each collectively lose their minds. After the scene, Magnus tells Alice they need to get away and Alice demands that they go out to the cabin. Michaela meets with Erica after Paul goes missing and says they'll likely need to send him away to treat him for high altitude psychosis after he's found. Magnus and Alice head out to the cabin, but Magnus says they're not able to make it with the car, so Alice insists that they walk. They eventually arrive, and Alice says she always liked the paintings of the Changeling, and Magnus breaks down when Alice says not to worry because they'll see Joe again one day, and Magnus says they won't because she's dead, and that they'll have to start again. We finally see Bud for the first time this episode when Paul shows up outside his apartment. Paul tells Bud he needs his help in getting some answers. They go inside and discuss Apollo 18, where Paul says he recalls there being an accident. Bud says, yeah, there was an accident. There was a sudden loss of pressure, and two men died. Paul said, nobody died, it was repaired by you, and says he needs answers. Bud says he can't go back there because it's what happened, even if it's not what he thought happened. Paul demands Bud tell him why he's there, and Bud pulls a gun and says, you tell me why you're here. And he does pull the trigger, presumably killing Paul, considering the title of this episode is Paul is Dead. Back at the cabin, Alice sees car lights outside and runs to the window to find Joe getting out of her car, the blue one, and the episode ends. All right, so I think it's safe to say this was one of the more insane episodes of this show, and unfortunately, it doesn't feel like we're really much closer to understanding everything going on here. Now, let's talk about this yellow universe idea that I talked about at the very beginning of the video. Throughout this show, we've seen indicators of which universe our characters are in based on red and blue color cues on things like wall color, clothing, car color, and more. In this episode, there was an overabundance of the use of the color yellow. I primarily noticed it here in Paul's home as well as here with Magnus and Alice. Plus, Alice's hair ties are yellow at certain points of this episode, but not others making me wonder if we're jumping around all three of these without really knowing. Now, I first theorized on three universes back in episode four when Joe walked into creepy Henry talking to the other one in his office before he said, curiosity killed the cat. I thought this was a third Henry because he just didn't seem to match the Henry or Bud we'd seen up to that point. And actually, if we take a look at that scene, there are pretty strong notes of yellow here and here. So I thought this interaction could have taken place in this yellow universe as well. Is it possible that this yellow universe is a sort of liminal space these characters slip into when not taking their lithium pills? Perhaps this is where Bud is going to be able to cross over into and affect Henry in his reality? And once again, I'm gonna have to point back to the conversation Henry was having with Alice out on the swing set back in episode three, because I think that that conversation is just so important to the overall story. During that conversation, Henry was 
was explaining that particles could be black in one place, white in another, and also somewhere in between. So I think it's possible this third universe, this yellow universe, may have been alluded to all the way back in that conversation. And that is this sort of liminal space that Henry's talking about where the particles or people in this case could be one or the other until they're observed, at which point they slip into the blue or red realities. Obviously in present day, Joe's main objective is to just get back to her reality with her Alice that she knows. And I think she's going to learn how to bridge these red and blue universes through this yellow one and potentially use it to get back to the life she left. I know this theory might be a bit out there, but I couldn't stop thinking about it after watching this episode. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this theory. Do you think I'm crazy? Does it make sense? Let me know down in the comments. And one last thing I'm gonna tack on here to the end of this video, I almost made a separate video about this completely. And that is that I think this entire show is hinging on the fact that Bud and Henry are both alive. I've been thinking about this a lot and I wonder if back when Bud and Henry switched universes, if one of them would have died, would any of this be happening? And that also begs the question, if one of them dies now, will things sort of just snap back into place? Snap back to reality. Or is it, just too messed up at this point and all these other characters are gonna remain crossed over in these other universes. I ultimately didn't make that video because as I go down that rabbit hole myself, I get to a point where I don't even know what questions to ask. This show's just so confusing. So if you have any thoughts on that as well, please let me know. All right, that'll do it for me on this episode. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.